Hello. We'll continue our lectures uh, on fertilization and we'll see uh, further the steps uh, that occur in uh, fertilization. So, they done some experiments. This is an important experiment that show that there is an increase in the uh, protein synthesis directly after fertilization. And these uh, protein sensors actually don't need any um, transcription straight after the fertilization. It uses messenger RNAs that are stored already in the oocyte cytoplasm. In this experiment, they used uh, an important compound, which a chemical compound, which is called actinomycin. This actinomycin is an inhibitor of transcription. So you can see normally the red line chart shows normally that straight after uh, fertilization, hours after fertilization, there is an increase in the rate of the protein synthesis uh, straight after the fertilization with the, with the increase in time uh, by hours after fertilization. While when they introduced in the seawater uh, the actinomycin, you will see a drop in the uh, uh, protein uh, synthesis. So this is an important experiment that show that there is a, a boost in the protein synthesis straight after fertilization. So once uh, fertilization and the fusion of genetic material, the, the and once the spermic come in contact with the egg uh, and the penetrates and manage to uh, um, internalize its head inside the egg cytoplasm, after the egg sperm enters egg cytoplasm, the male pronucleus separates from the tail and rotates 100 degrees so that the sperm centriole is between sperm and egg pronuclei. So the sperm centriole, it's important because it acts as a microtubule organizing center, will soon help uh, the, uh, the uh, zygote form after fertilization to uh, divide. These microtubules extend throughout, that originated from the sperm centriole, extend throughout the egg and contact the female pronucleus. Then the two pronuclei migrate toward each other and there is a fusion which forms a diploid nucleus. The DNA synthesis can begin either in the pronuclear stage, which means during migration, or after the formation of the zygote, zygote nucleus, which is now diploid to N. And this this de depend on a, on a very uh, important um, ion, which is the calcium ion, which is released in the cytoplasm uh, aerial, aerial in fertilization. So what about getting the gametes into the oviduct? And the two important mechanism is the translocation and the capacitation. So the female reproductive uh, tract the female rib is not a passive conduit, so it's not uh, uh, useless. It has a function, so through which sperm raise this uh, uh, female reproductive tract. But it, it is highly specialized set of tissue that actively regulates the transport and the maturity of both gametes. So what, what is translocation? The translocation of a sperm from vagina to oviduct involves many processes that work at different times and places. The uterine muscle contraction are critical in getting the sperm into oviduct, while sperm motility by, uh, provided by the flagella is a minor factor in getting sperm into oviduct. So the motility, of course, it is required for mouse sperm to travel through the cervical mucus and for sperm to encounter egg once they are in the oviduct. So what about capacitation? Capacitation actually it's a set of physiological changes that allow the sperm to be competent to fertilize the egg, to be, have the enough characteristics to fertilize the egg. Although some human sperm reach the oviduct within, ha within half an hour after intercourse, speed sperm doesn't mean that they have the maximum chance of fertilizing, but speed sperm may have little chance of fertilizing the egg since they have not undergo an important um, uh, process, which is capacitation. So actually there are five sets of molecular change takes 
changes takes pla take place in during capacitation. The first thing is the alteration of the sperm cell membrane by the removal of cholesterol by albumin protein in the female reproductive tract. So album, pro uh, album protein, which is in the female uh, reproductive tract, which is the oviduct or the fallopian tube, this removes the cholesterol, lipid molecules of cholesterol from the sperm cell membrane. And this will disrupt the lipid arrangement of the sperm cell membrane. This lipid will form lipid rafts cluster over the anterior, over the anterior sperm head. These lipids contain protein that can bind to the zona bulliosida and participate in the acrosome reaction. So this is the first molecular change that occurs during capacitation. The second one is there are particular proteins or carbohydrates on a sperm surface that block the recognition site for, for sperm proteins that binds to uh, the zona bulliosa, and these particular proteins or carbohydrates are lost. The third mechanism is the membrane potential of the sperm cell membrane. The membrane potential becomes more negative as potassium ion leaves sperm and calcium, ch calcium channels are open. Calcium and bicarbonate ions are very crucial in activating the cyclic AMP production and as well in facilitating the membrane fusion events of the acrosome reaction. While the fourth mechanism is a protein phosphorylation, which occurs on two chaperon protein. Chaperon protein is a kind of a heat shock protein, and these, pro these two chaperon protein migrate to the surface of the sperm head when they are phosphorylated. So this protein actually present in the cytoplasm of the sperm head, and then once they are phosphorylated, they are recruited to the plasma membrane. So why they are recruited to the plasma membrane of the sperm head? Because they play an essential role in forming the receptor that binds to the zona bulliosida. While the fifth mechanism in which the outer acrosomal membrane changes and come in contact with the sperm cell membrane in a way that separates, in, 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 sorry, in a way that prepares it for fusion. So let's see here the hypothetic hypothetical model for the sper mammalian sperm activation. So you can see here, this actually the sperm cell membrane, and you can see that the albumin here have removed the cholesterol from the membrane, a step in the capacitation. You can see that there is efflux of calcium and influx of uh, bicarbonate. The, uh, the, if, the, the efflux of calcium, of course, as we said, will change the membrane potential with the, with the influx of calcium. And of course, this will lead to hyperpolarization of the membrane. As well, the uh, bicarbonate together with uh, the calcium will activate the formation of cyclic AMP through the adenylate uh, cyclase enzyme, which is an enzyme is located in the cell membrane of the sperm. Once uh, a cyclic AMP is formed, activate an enzyme, which is protein kinase A, that activate a protein tyrosine kinase as well inhibit a phosphotyrosine phosphatase which counteract the action of the kinase. Both of these events will lead to protein tyrosine phosphorylation for a specific protein that lead to capacitation. Together with the hyperpolarization of the membrane, this will, uh, uh, this will um, uh, make sure that the capacitation is uh, uh, functioning. So as a coda for fertilization, fertilization is not a moment or an event, but actually it is a process of carefully orchestrated and coordinated events, including the contact, the fusion of gametes, the fusion of nuclei, and the activation of development. It is a process whereby two cells, each at the verge of this, each will die. They need to unite to create a new, organi a new organism that will have numerous uh, cell types and organs. It is just the beginning of a series of cell-cell interactions that characterize animal development. So now we'll talk on this uh, uh, second, uh, the following topic of the early invertebrate development as well as uh, cell specification. 
So to remind you, uh, it starts with uh, the individual, which is adult, which, which is able to f undergo spermatogenesis in males and oogenesis in females that give rise to uh, gametes upon fertilization. They undergo the second important uh, developmental stage, which is cleavage, followed by gastric relation, and then new relation formation of the uh, uh, nervous uh, tissue, then organogenesis, organ formation, then cytodifferentiation, and then uh, lead to the individual life among gross and mature do the same cycle. Of course, th these all starting from fertilization until cytogenesis, and this uh, under the uh, embryogenesis. We already uh, finished, uh, finished talking about fertilization, and we'll deal with the second developmental stage, which, which is the cleavage. So what is cleavage? Fertilization is followed by cleavage, which actually, actually it's a series of mitotic divisions. So in, in which the enormous volume of zygote cytoplasm, the big zygote, will be divided into numerous smaller cells, which is called blastomeres. The zygotic genome doesn't function in early cleavage embryos. First, the zygote is divided in, into half, then quarter, then eight, and, so, and so, so on and so forth. The divisions is accomplished by abolishing the gross period between cell division. So normally, as, as you know already, that cell cycle have four phases, which is G1, S, G2, M. So in mitotic division, there is no G1, G2 phases of the cell cycle. So there is no gross. So upon successive, this successive mitotic division of cleavage, the, the blastomeres get smaller and smaller. The cleavage of the nuclear occurs at a rapid rate never seen again. So you can see here, a zygote can divide into 30,000 cells in 43 hours. In Drosophila, which is a fruit fly, in Drosophila zygote, it can divide into 50,000 cells in just two hours. And you can see from this line chart, the rate of the formation of the new cells, this, the line chart shows the number of cells per embryo, during the early development of the frog rana. So you can see after uh, about uh, 40, uh, for, uh, after, after starting after fertilization, hours after fertilization, the cleavage, that's mean the mitotic division, markedly increase until uh, reaching a, 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 a peak that have a little difference during the uh, little increase uh, during gastrulation. So the major uh, mitotic divisions that occur, occur in the stage of the uh, cleavage. So from fertilization to cleavage, with the rabbit cell division, the ratio of cytoplasm, of course, to the nuclear uh, volume gets increasingly smaller as cleavage progresses. This decrease in the cytoplasmic to nuclear volume ratio is crucial in the activation of certain genes. For example, in the Vrock Xenopus levers, the transcription of new messages is not activated until reaching 12, uh, until finishing 12 division, which is generally called the mid blastula stage. Thus, cleavage begins soon after fertilization and ends shortly after the mid blastula transition stage, when the embryo achieves a balance between nucleus and the cytoplasmic ratio. The transition from fertilization to cleavage is caused by the activation, activation of an important protein, which is the mitosis promoting factor, MPF. MPF is responsible for restarting of meiotic uh, cell division in frog egg. The blastomeres generally progress through a cell cycle, consists of just two steps or two phases, M and S. As we said before, there is no G1, there is no G2. And in this case, it's called biphasic cell cycle. So the MPF activity of early blastomere is highest during, M during the M phase and undetectable during the S phase. So you can see here, this normally the cell cycle have a G1, have a G2, have an S, have an M. And you can see there is a lot of uh, protein complex that control the progression uh, through the cell cycle. At some point during cell division, normal cell division, some cells enter a G node or G0 in which they are quiescent and they stop dividing. But in the case, 
this, this like the cell cycle in case of somatic cells. But in case of blastomeres, the story is different. And as we said, it only comprises two phases. And as you can see, uh, the cyclins, which is controlling the uh, progression through the cycle, allow progression from M phase, while cy cyclin degradation allows cells to pass into S phase. And you can see these uh, two cycles. These uh, cells that are differenti uh, differentiated, differentiating are usually taken out of the cell cycle. So that's when they stop cycling. Are in the extended G1 phase or simply we can call it G0 or G0. So what about the mitosis uh, promoting factor, MPF? MPF consists of contains of two subunits, large subunit and small subunits. For example, cycling B and cycling dependent kinase. And you can see it here, cycling B and cycling dependent kinase. That's the MBF, okay? So cyclin B is encoded by messenger RNA stored in the O-cytoblast. So there is no need to do a transcription because it's already there in the excytoblast. And this to enable the cell to enter mitosis. The kinase, which is a cyclin dependent kinase, activate mitosis by phosphorylating several target proteins. Hence the chromatin condensation nuclear uh, 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 hence chromatin uh, condensation, nuclear envelope depolymerization, and the organization of the mitotic spindle. Therefore, the cell cycle is independent of the nuclear genome. However, as cytoplasmic compo components are used up, the nucleus begin to sense them, because as we said, the, cyto the cytoplasm of the egg initially before fertilization is full of messenger RNA. So, uh, while, the while during cleavage, these messenger RNA are translated into different protein according to the need of the cells, uh, of the cells of the blastomere that is formed during cleavage. So they are used up. So they are used up during the process of cleavage. So uh, that's why we said as cytoplasmic components are used up, the nucleus begins to start to sensors again and do transcription for more. The excytoplasm is divided into smaller and smaller cells, but the total volume of the organism remain unchanged. So what about the mid blastula transition stage? The events that characterize the mid blastula transition states, we can summarize into, it is the ratio of the cytoplasmic to nuclear volume get increasingly smaller as cleavage progress. G1 and G2 are added to cell cycle, permitting the cells to, to grow. So now, in the mid blastula uh, transition state, the G1 and G2 are again added to the, uh, uh, to the cell cycle. And now it, it will be back into four phases. So for example, after the 12th cleavage in the Xenopus embryo, and after that uh, uh, 14 and 17 cycle, uh, G2 is added and G1 is added. The third uh, phenomena is there is a synchronization of cell division. The synchronization of cell division is lost. So that means they are not all dividing at the same time. The nuclear genes begin to be transcribed. Before the mid blastula stage, uh, the, the, the protein needed for the uh, mitotic, the, these mitotic uh, division, uh, the proteins are made from the messenger RNA that already in the excytoplasm. The fifth uh, phenomena or characteristic, uh, characteristic of the mid blastula transition state, a stage that there are new messenger RNA transcribed that is necessary for the next developmental stage, which is the gastrulation. And the blastomere becomes motile. So what about the cytoskeletal mechanism of mitosis? As you know, cleavage have two coordinated process, the karyokinases and the cytokinases. And the karyokinase, actually, it is the mitotic division of nucleus, while the cytokinase, it is the division of the cell cytoplasm, the cell, the whole. This, the first one, the karyo needs a mechanical agent, with, which is the mitotic spindle, the tubulin, while the cytokinases needs another mechanical agent, it's a, it's the actin, the actin, which forms the contractile ring. And from the figure, you can see the contractile uh, ring helps in the uh, cytokinases. 
the mitotic spindle and the contractor ring must be perpendicular to each other. So you can see they are perpendicular to each other. So here from the uh, figure, you can see that the uh, uh, tubulin are in green, while the actin are in red, and both of them are perpendicular. This contractile uh, uh, ring create, creates a cleavage furrow, which bisects the plane of, uh, of mitosis, and so the, it creates two genetically equivalent uh, blastomeres. You can see here, it's a, diff, uh, it's a comparison between uh, karyokinases and cytokinases. Of course, as we said, the karyo is need the mitotic spindle, while the cyto needed, needing is the contractile ring. The major protein is tubulin acting in case of cyto cytokinases. The location, of course, in the, cent the karyokinases, which is the tubulin, is located in the central of the cytoplasm. You can see in the central. While the, uh, while the contractile ring is in the cortical uh, cytoplasm, the major drugs used uh, to stop these um, uh, mechanisms are colchicine and nacodazole, while the others are cytokinases and cytocalzine. B. And normally these uh, drugs normally uh, can be used to treat, uh, to, to treat uh, some uh, kinds of cancer because uh, basically and obviously if you use this kind of drug, it will stop either karyokinases and cytokinases. So uh, it means it can stop the uh, successive cell division in uh, progressive cell division and, and the active cell division in cancer. So now we'll talk about the patterns of, uh, of, uh, of cleavage that are seen after the process of uh, fertilization. So what is the patterns of embryonic cleavage? It is particular to each species and, and these uh, 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 differentiate between, so every organism have a different way of cleavage. And majorly there are Two, the, there are two major parameters that control uh, the cleavage. The amount and distribution of the milk material, the nutrient material which exists in the cytoplasm, as, as well, and as well factors in the acytoplasm that influence angle of mitotic spindle and the timing of its formation. So the amount of distribution and distribution of yolk determines where cleavage can occur and the relative size of the blastomeres. Is it big or small? Uh, compar com comparatively, when, when, when one pole of the egg is relatively yolk free, the cellular division occurs at a faster uh, rate than at the opposite pole. So normally we say yolk rich pole is a vegetable pole, while the yolk less pole is an animal pole. The zygote nucleus is frequently displaced toward the animal pole. In general, yolk inhibits cleavage. So what about continuing because I'm talking about the pattern of embryonic cleavage. So for starting with the simplest type of the egg is the eggs of the sea ocean, mammals and snails. They have sparse amount of yolk, yolk material and it is equally spaced. This, this type of egg is called isolacelsal and this type of egg undergo a holoplastic cleavage. What's the meaning of holoplastic cleavage? Holo means complete, plastic from the blastomeres. So the cleavage is complete and equal. So the cleavage of furrow extends through the entire egg, splitting the egg. So embryos must have other way of, of, of obtaining food. That's why this kind of animal, the sea urchins, mammals, and the snails, need to have a larval stage to continue feed, since the amount of yolk existing in the cytoplasm is not enough after uh, the uh, uh, termination of the developmental process, and it needs to be uh, uh, metamorphosed into a, a, another larva, another stage, which in some cases, like uh, uh, sea ocean, it's larval stage, and in our case, in mammals, for example, uh, the embryo needs, uh, the fetus needs the placenta to continue uh, uh, to, to have the nutrient material from uh, the mother. So in the, in the absence of this, of a large concentration of yolk, there are four cleavage types can be observed. They have a radial cleavage, a radial holoplastic cleavage, you have a spiral holoplastic cleavage, you have a bilateral holoplastic cleavage, and you have a rotational holoplastic cleavage. 
in case another case in case there is a moderate amount average amount of of yolk in the vegetal region so this type of egg is called the mesolysosal egg and this type of egg as well undergo a holoplastic cleavage for insects fish and uh, uh, reptiles and birds most of the cells are made of, of, of yolk, large amount of yolk material. So this type of cleavage is called meroplastic cleavage, in which a portion of the cytoplasm is cleaved, not the whole egg, and this cleavage furrow doesn't penetrate at all into the yolk portion, and yolk is sufficient to nourish these uh, kind of animals. Eggs of insects have yolk localized into the center, so this type of egg is called the central essential egg. And in this case, the cleavage occurs only in the rim where the cytoplasm is present, and this is around the periphery of the cell. So this kind of cleavage is called superficial cleavage. While egg of birds and fishes have only one small area of egg that is free of yolk have a larger amount of yolk that occupy almost all of the uh, of the uh, zygote. So this uh, telo, this type of egg is called the telolithesal egg, and the cleavage occurs only in this small disk of cytoplasm on top of the yolk, and hence this type of cleavage is called discoidal cleavage. So let's see each type how it looks. For the holoplastic cleavage or complete cleavage, you can see the first type is the isolysosal egg, characterized by sparse and evenly distributed egg. So this type of cleavage occurs in the echinoderms and amphioxus, and you can see it's a radial cleavage, in which this is the zygote, first the cleavage, the second the cleavage, four plastomeres, and then third the cleavage resulting in eight plastomeres. While the spiral cleavage is a, a, it is a, a characteristic for annelids and mollusks and flatworms, there is normal a first cleavage, second cleavage, and the third cleavage. Why it's called a spiral? Because normally, after the third cleavage, you can see that each blastomere is in on top of the its daughter blastomere. But for the spiral cleavage, you can notice there is a, 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 tip, a tip of rotation. Let's let's show it with, with a pen. So here, these two blastomeres is on top of each other, but, th but in this case, in this case, you can see that these blastomeres have moved have rotated the top ring of blastomeres of these four blastomeres have been rotated in a way that they are now not each blastomere on top of, of its daughter blastomere. And that's why it's called the spiral cleavage. In the bilateral cleavage, you can see, you can see how, why it's called the bilateral, because it's after the third cleavage, you can notice that the embryo have a bilateral symmetry between the two halves. And it occurs in a group of animals which is called uh, tonicates, protocordates. For rotational cleavage, there, there as well uh, cleavage starts after the third cleavage, the uh, blastomeres start to rotate and have, uh, uh, have this uh, position uh, after rotation of the blastomeres. You can see how it's uh, rotated and it's like normally, like uh, it differs from the other one. So all of these occur in the isolysosal type of egg and all of them are holoplastic complete cleavage. What about the mesolysis uh, uh, type of egg? It has a moderate amount of yolk, uh, and you can see there is a displaced radial cleavage, so, and it occurs in amphibians. So actually, it's a radial cleavage as, 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 as this one. So it's a radial cleavage basically as this one, but it is displaced. How that is displaced? Because the first one is okay, the second one is okay, but the third one, you can notice that it's a little bit displaced to the above. And it is obviously because it's a have a moderate amount of yolk. So most of the yolk is concentrated here, most of the yolk. So this leads to displacement of the cleavage furrow of the third of the third cleavage uh, to, the, to, to the upper region. As we said that uh, the, cleav the, the, uh, the cleavage furrow uh, uh, cannot uh, pass uh, a large amount of yolk. For the meroplastic cleavage, 
which is incomplete cleavage. Uh, as an example is the telolysisal egg, which have a very dense amount of yolk throughout most of the cell. So you will see there is a bilateral cleavage that occur in the cephalopod and mollusks. So cephalopod is like the loligo or squids. You can see that cleavage follow only on the top of the egg. And of course, you can see it is not complete because it's not separating the, uh, the, the zygote into complete two blastomeres. And they start like doing like a fission, fission, uh, fission on top of the egg. And you can notice now this is uh, every single blastomere. That's blastomere and that's blastomere. That's for the bilateral cleavage in the neuroplastic uh, in the telolysisal egg. For the discoidal cleavage that occur in fish, reptiles, and birds, you can see that why it's called discoidal because it is only confined to a desk on top of the yolk material. So you can see all the cleavage, uh, blast, uh, all the cleaved blastomeres are on top, all the cleaved, cleaved blastomeres are on top of the uh, zygote. For the, cent for the uh, central cell, Central cell is yolk is in concentrated inside the inside the, the center of the egg. So you can see here there is like a, a syncytium of a nuclei. That means you have a lot of nuclei, a lot of nuclei that all have one cytoplasm. For this, uh, and due to the fact that the uh, the uh, yolk is concentrated in the center here, the yolk. The black dots are the nuclei. So there is only a, div a cleavage, superficial cleavage. So actually there, there will be boundaries in the cytoplasm. And this boundary, each two boundary, will occupy one nucleus, will move to each of these two boundaries, boundaries and will form a blastomeres. So as a result of that, blastomeres will be arranged superficially and surrounding the yolk material. And here you can see all the types of the cleavage all together uh, in one uh, figure. And this uh, concludes our uh, lecture today.